Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to be focusing on a whole discussion I had with Anders Kaysorg. He uh, is a, a master science graduate from MIT. And this was done quite a long time ago, in fact. I uh, don't know the exact date on this. I don't remember. It's 2014, so it's uh, almost almost nine years ago. Now, uh, this particular professor here, Jack Hazinger, and there is a photo here of how he looks. Here you go. This, this is how he looked then, I think. And this is perhaps how he looks now in this photograph here. So I'm not here to uh, dox him or anything like that, only to focus on the facts. So um, at first, he produced a critique, which was a whole rant about the new calculus uh, uh, derivative, which is this, very quickly, uh, which is this. He produced an entire rant about that being the central difference. He didn't bother to study the facts that were in the, that were in my article uh, where I explained that x this distance here this is uh, x minus m and x plus n meaning this is m and this is n and so so he, he he didn't even bother to to look at this and of course this wasn't known before i came along nobody in history knew about these things um so he just dismissed it very casually and uh, when i pointed out his errors one by one he retracted the article in, in other words took it off quora this shitty site that you're about to see here. Um, where is it? Uh, okay, I didn't load Quora, but this was from Quora, this discussion here. Um, it took place entirely on Quora. So he, he retracted it and he sent me an email asking me not to mention his name. And I told him I'd do it on one condition, the condition that he apologizes. Well, he never did. And here I am again, showing what an ignorant moron this math academic is and how wrong he is. So let's look at his first statement. He says, mainstream academia considers calculus to be true because it is built on a history of proof and rigor. Now that's, this here is just pure assertion. Okay. It's not true at all. And nobody gives a damn what mainstream mathematics academia thinks. I only care about the facts. So number one, um, somebody considering something to be true or false doesn't mean it is. Number two, a saying it is built on a history of proof and rigor is just an assertion, okay, over the past 100 years. So he says everything in it follows from extremely simple axioms of set theory. Now, that is utter garbage because what he's referring to there are the ZFC axioms, and they're not really axioms of any sort. They're actually beliefs, okay? Belief has no place in science or any field of rational thought. So, and he says that all the major issues of set theory, which existed, have, have been solved since then. That's absolute rubbish. Set theory is not even mathematics. It should never have been part of mathematics. It should never have been in the mathematics curriculum, okay? and neither should ZFC, and I have written extensive articles on that. Um, I will recommend some articles and books in the detail section. So he says, mathematicians, who is he talking about? I don't know of any mainstream mathematicians. If, if you tell me mainstream morons, yes, I know of a lot of them. And he says they are not concerned with the objections raised by John Gabriel. You know why? Because they're arrogant nincompoops. And then he makes a false statement immediately. He says, because every argument he makes at his contrary has some obvious flaw in it. Now, you see, this bastard saying something like this makes it very, very influential because he's a professor, you see. 
and he's part of the mainstream. So somebody who reads this will think that this guy's right and I'm wrong. Okay, so so you know to say that has that everything I, I, I said has some obvious flaw in it without even saying what the flaws are and then retracting his article for crying out loud. Why didn't he defend his bullshit claims in his article? I'll tell you why, because they were indefensible. So the first objection he makes, he makes four here, and I'll go through them. He says, John objects to the fact that we can construct the real numbers. And there is no such thing as a real number. It's a load of bullshit. And in my book called The Ultimate Book of Numbers, which you can download free here, I tell you everything there is to know about number. There has never been a book written of this historical uh, value and truth, by the way. What I tell you in this book is the truth 100%. Okay. There is no assertion. There is no consideration. Nothing of the sort. I just give you the facts. So he says a real number is not constructed as a data can cut using only rational numbers. He says the whole cut must be considered at once. Now, uh, the little the little lackey morons like Marcus Cliver and Zealous Malum, they ran with that, you know. So how can you consider the whole cut? And just to give you a demonstration here, the idiots say something like this. Uh, root 2. <laughs> and they assume that this here, uh, this, I'm sorry, it's like that. And this is root 2. And this is negative infinity on the side. So they assume that this is the whole cut. Excuse me, but, you know, this concept here is a load of bullshit to begin with. So, and what I said, by the way, what I say in my article is I give a definition of the cut and I say, uh, without loss of generality, the cut, I can show that the cut is an invalid concept. And I do that very cleverly and ingeniously, by the way like nobody else could. Dierkin was a fucking idiot, like most mainstream professors. So I will let the facts speak for themselves. I'll place a link to that article. Then he says, John objects to the fact that we have rigorous definition of limit. You know, this I've proved is false so many times over. Here's an article with six simple reasons why it's wrong. And then I've also written uh, the nonfiction origins and history of calculus and the holy grail of calculus. All of these things show that what he's saying here in objection to is blatantly false. Okay. It actually makes me angry when I read these, uh, these accusations. And then he says, here's the funniest one. He says, I discuss things like sine X over X. Well, you know, this guy is such a moron has never understood even the concept of number. And yes, I do say, even up till this very day, that F0 is equal to 1. And yes, I can do it with Newton side, sine series, or I can do it with uh, with my ingenious... I'll show you now. I'll show you now. I can do it with my ingenious definition of the trigonometric function, which I revealed in ancient... in this in this article here. This, this formula here, okay? I'll put a link to it too. Don't worry. And I'll show you there that the sine of x is equal to x over 1 minus 2x plus 2x squared. Now, if I divide that by x, that's the same as saying 1 over root 1 of 2x plus 2x squared. And guess what? If I put sine of 0 there, it's very well defined. It equals to 1. Okay, and the same thing happens with Newton's series, bullshit sine series, which is not even anywhere near the ingenuity of my formula. But Newton says one, actually says x minus x cubed over 3 factorial minus x5, uh, plus x5 over 5 factorial, etc. And then, of course, if you divide all that by x, this first term becomes a 1. And... The x's are all in the numerators. So yes, sine of 0 is defined. Okay? Uh, sine, of, uh, sine of 0 over 0 is defined. And it's equal to 1. Okay? So um, I did back it up and I showed these things. But the idiot is too stupid. He doesn't even understand the concept of a number or the concept of cancellation. But most mainstream 
Academics don't have a clue what these things mean. So then he says, in order to discuss the aforementioned function, he expands it in a power set and says, look, you can plug in zero and it works. But if, say, you wish to define the sine function via power series, you had better know what the limit of a sequence of real number is. <laughs> and here we get into that bullshit theory of limits, which has no place in calculus, which I've proved in the holy grail of calculus, okay? And which I've shown over and over again is a concept that uh, is not needed in calculus. So he says... Uh, I'm inconsistent with my principles or what is and what is not allowed, and I change the rules at his own whim. Now, you know, that's like Trump supporters and like Trump himself. Whenever they uh, try to uh, accuse their followers, they say exactly what they are guilty of. And this is what the mainstream does. I mean, if you look at set theory, it's such a load of bullshit from the very first belief till the very last one. Okay, and then finally says most of John's discussions uh, or objections say go read my life's work, etc., etc. So you see, and, and he ends the, he ends his commentary. Now he has ap he has said absolutely nothing that is factual here. This is all assertion. This bastard went on the internet and got me kicked off Quora. By the way, he he's a criminal. For, for doing that, in my opinion, because he has not only robbed me of a chance to um, tell the world of my and share my brilliant ideas with the world, but he has also stimmied young people from learning mathematics and learning these wonderful new facts and knowledge that I discovered. So, as you can see, you know, this this is the poster boy of mainstream academia. And... I don't know how else to, to say this, but I absolutely loathe this person. He is a vile, disgusting, unethical, uh, ignorant, incorrigibly stupid mainstream academic. If you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. Follow me on Academia. I'll place links to all these sections. And uh, tell your friends about it. And also feel free to donate. My name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.